Caddis Maximus here. This is just uh, a little exercise to look at some neat mechanics. Tearing down this old slot load, slot load DVD rewriter. Uh, this is a laptop drive, and the whole purpose of this is just because there's oftentimes pretty interesting mechanics inside these. And so, figured we'd just do a little tear down here just for the exercise of it. These little laptop drives are always pretty compact, and so the way they integrate stuff is oftentimes pretty cool. Oh, come on. <laughs> the screw is not cooperating here. There we go. It was actually a bit longer <laughs> than the others. There we go and the cover just pops up and what's interesting about these is instead of having a uh, magnet that it gets stuck to in the top instead it actually presses the disc and it has these little fingers that hold the disc in and just pulling off the top you can see what's really kind of interesting about it is all this is stamped sheet metal but the deal with it is is all these pieces of sheet metal have to be uh, not have burrs so they don't catch and two, they all have to be super flat, and surprisingly enough, to make a piece like this, stamping it out and ensuring it's pretty, fl it's super flat, is not very easy. And so this is just the arm. When you put the disc in, this arm hits a lever and then starts driving this motor here, which runs the whole mechanism to pull the disc in and get it going. It'll be I'll, maybe I'll be able to activate. It. But when you push it in, these arms kind of go back. This one can't go back without this first going these go back and then what the motor is doing is actually activating this arm all the way out here which is then pushing the disc fully into the I guess the next thing to do is remove this little plastic bit here I believe these are all machine assembled you wouldn't hand assemble something like this what is also handy about taking apart this kind of stuff is that you end up with a bunch of these little random screws that you know are basically impossible to find but if you have a collection of them then if you have lost something that needs one of those screws then you can find it i believe we can get the whole assembly it's kind of like an assembly inside a case so then and what's interesting is they have a plastic protective cover but they left all cutouts for the screws so that makes it pretty easy for us to uh, disassemble this unit and we'll knock out these little screws None of these are particularly tight. It is an aluminum frame on this unit. Which is kind of nice. Sometimes these electronics, um, particularly with hard drives, are super tight screws. And if you don't have just the perfect screwdriver, uh, you end up just stripping out all the little screws. There's our little screws. And I think that's almost it. A little tip, we can see here there's a brass fitting and there is a brass fitting. So those are two more screws that are going to be holding it together. One is actually on the SATA connector there. And another one's actually on another plastic guide up here. There's actually two on this plastic guide. One there. and one here. Plus it's kind of an adventure just to take these things apart. We actually have another plastic guide right here but it's kind of a interesting little snap-in affair. There we go. Get that little bit out of here. Now this whole thing ought to peel up out of here. And it really was that easy. Kind of interesting. And there we have the uh, internal mechanics. And we have some expected stuff like a little micro switch for triggering when it's all the way open. Another one for triggering when it's closed. I don't know which one exactly goes in which places. Little rubber bushings to, or soft silicone bushings just to suspend the actual carriage to reduce vibration. I'm going to pop one of these gears off, see if we can't uh, get that little thing working. 
have these little clips. They're kind of like little split snap rings. These just happen to be plastic because it's just a little drive. And if we can't get that, whoop, just unplug that wire. They can be sometimes difficult to get apart. Here we go. There it is. And so this is kind of the mechanism. It goes, and then this rod, can't tell if it goes forward or backwards. So that ejects it. And so as the disc goes forward, whoop, lost some more pieces. These go in and the back. And then this thing, if I can get it to cooperate here, kind of funky trying to operate this. Here's a little catch, hits on this eye, that's part of what lifts the carriage up. Come on, cooperate. I don't know why it doesn't want to move. Maybe that's why it didn't work. There we go. We can see a little track in there. That pushes, there we go, pushes the mechanism up so that this rises up, presses against the lid here. It actually causes this to snap the disc in. And then once we've got it all together here, I don't know why this isn't moving. It kind of sits like this, and then these rollers kind of act like little guides. Anyway, let's uh, knock the rest of the screws out of this. We've got our little wires here. One for the motor, and surprisingly enough, this whole carriage kind of just floats in there just like that. It's really kind of surprising, just kind of is balanced on these two pegs. This is the peg that rises and lowers it. And then this is another little slot, and I can see that these arms, what's happening with the arms is there's actually a second mechanism. It's hard for me to show, obviously, but when this moves forward, that moves one peg. But at the same time, it's sliding this piece along that guide to move it up and down. Really is kind of surprising mechanics inside these things, once again, just because... Uh, it's how integrated it's all kind of like cameras and that other stuff. It's just neat to see uh, all this super tiny stuff uh, Just all so precisely uh, Manufactured and machined and then, quite frankly, it's kind of so you know It's the deals mass production, but there's awful lot of components and parts and stuff going inside Going on inside one of these things to make all this work Just adjust and pull that out and then there's a whole bunch of our sheet metal mechanics. This is that's really what this is a demonstration of. Is just, uh, just exactly that mastery of uh, of sheet metal, because this whole mechanism is pretty darn complicated, and we can see it's pretty darn thin. I mean that thing is like three, two or three millimeters thick just for the whole mechanism that loads and unloads the disc and raises and lowers the uh, the operating platform really kind of neat and how the other neat part is it's mo there's a, actually relatively few screws because all these little moving parts are held together just by little these metal posts that everything rides on are all just riveted into the space plate there's just tons of these little flush rivets Besides that, it's just a standard little DC motor that actually drives that mechanism. Actually, I have to pull this piece out. Held in by some tiny little springs. And then we can actually get the rest of these gears out and pop that little motor out. I was just looking at this. This is a two-way toggle switch that kind of explains my confusion. So this just must be a limit switch to know that it's really gone too far. But whether it's going forward or backwards, this is actually a double-sided or a double swing switch. It's going to be one of the smallest little switches I've ever seen. Surface mounted. And then getting this apart. Already got that gear out of there. Just two little screws and they conveniently included little slots. 
That's how they assembled it. Two tiny little screws holding in this little motor. And usually those are the ones that are in there pretty tight. And then there's just a tiny little brush DC motor. It doesn't operate very often, so that's all they need is a little brush motor. Keep that just to fiddle around with. And then we have the actual drive carriage. And not a lot here. We got a couple screws holding on the... This looks like a protective plate. Get those out of here. That must be a long one. Oh, there we go. And there's a little clip on each side. That's way too big of a screwdriver there. Little felt pad. And then there's the frame. We have a guide rod and we have uh, spring loaded uh, position screw. And the interesting point about this is that uh, the way these are machined, they can actually, this screw can be back driven uh, just by moving back and forth. So this would be like in CNC machines, so it's, you know, it's a lead screw. And then they have a little spring loaded mechanism here with a couple of plastic teeth. They're a little bit oversized, so it prevents there from being any uh, backlash in that. It's absolutely tight and is actually su moves surprisingly smoothly. Since this positioning does need to be pretty precise, um, this is a actual four wire motor, so I believe that's a stepper motor. And then this is just going to be a DC brushless motor, just like a, in a computer fan. We've got a few more screws, <laughs> tons of screws in here, but let's pull out the uh, drive motor. These may be a little tighter, and they are, just because it is the drive motor. Don't want to lose those little screws. Those would suck to step on. And I think so many things are just amazing about these. Even when you get down to the screws, the head of that screw is so super thin. There we go. I'm measuring the head of this screw. Ten thousandths of an inch thick. Pop that out, and that's all. This is just a brushless DC motor. I think this is a uh, it may be a three wire and what we can see no it's a four wire as well there's eight wires here but that's the deal this is just taped or stickumed here that's the reason this connector had so many contacts is because four go into this motor and then another four passing through to the head motor itself and just a few screws left what we have here is screws that base that are holding in these rod the guide rods that's a little tensioner for the, the guide rod. And of course the motor itself. Get that out of there. Whoop. Get this out of there. Get that out of there. That one. And this one. And that should be it. Yes, it is. Here's our guide rods. I do like to save these guide rods whenever I do take this type of stuff apart, mainly because these are an alloy steel and they are super polished. They're good to use sometimes when you just need uh, solid guide pins or ropes. Oftentimes, there's tools and stuff that use roll pins that just the roll pins aren't durable enough and so if you get a little collection of these rods then it's uh, just kind of handy to use to replace roll pins with we have some of the world's tiniest cone tension springs here those are super tiny but if you have like a little quarter inch ratchet or something that you need to fix or replace a spring from these little cone springs would come in handy in that situation and there's our tiny little stepper motor. You can, I can feel the cogging. What's interesting is they actually spot welded this 
whatever the support plate to the motor is so small they didn't have space for screws at all so they just spot welded it probably not the strongest spot welds in the world I'm just wondering even for a little device like this you'd actually need to use pliers it's surprisingly well held on there just a couple little spot welds and those really work and then of course we have the little uh, read right head so anyway thanks for joining me on this video I mean uh, here's the last of the read right head there's the laser itself but you have various sensors here uh, sensors here some of these are reading writing for working with CD or working with DVD uh, a fairly complicated mirror system uh, some other kind of sensors something over here so I don't really know how this all works because it is a DVD and CD RW uh, rewriter but it seems to all come down to this this one little laser right there this thing is super tiny I don't know it's glued in there that glue is actually more like a paste kind of interesting so I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it out of there anyway this is always a need for an exercise just to take something like that apart just to marvel a little bit at all the microscopic mechanics that are going on inside it anyway kind of an esoteric video but I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing if you haven't subscribed please do till next time Catus Maximus out